Shmaran, on the top of the page of 284, if you rubbed your hands together, you should be careful. You shouldn't touch anywhere else. See, when you're going to rub your hands together after you wash your hands, don't touch anywhere where the water didn't get wet. Mm. Because they can make each other's tummy. On the top of 25, Maran says, If you washed one hand, and you rubbed it in your head, why? You mean wash one hand and rub it in my head? Yeah, why? Maybe sometimes we do that when we want to moisture our hair. Okay. Or maybe add some hair loose here. Loose, and you just want to. Do you remember in Siman Kuf Samach Dalit? Oh, you don't remember because we didn't do it yet. But we've talked about it in the laws of washing hands in the morning. Yeah. If you're scratching your head, you have to wash your hands afterwards. Here he's not doing it because he's itching his head. Here he's doing it because he's trying to wash some part of his head. So he washed his hand, and like he has something on his forehead, so it goes like this mm-hmm. with the water. Mm-hmm. Now, what's the purpose of touching his forehead? Want to get rid of something. To wash it, correct? Mm-hmm. Over kotel, or you rubbed it in the wall. Why? Could be it itched, or, or there's some dirt on the wall. person then touches the wall. Yeah, he's trying to wash the wall, let's say. Touch it on your head. And then he goes back and he touches that water again, either the water on his face or the water on the wall. It's Why? The impure water that came from your hand is now on the wall. Mm-hmm. Now you touch it, it goes back to your hand and makes it tameh. And even though the kol kama deloshiv shef that technically you could really rub the water into your hands to make it pure. But now that you're using that water a second time, it's worse. We've already explained before that anybody who pours a revit of water on their hands, mm-hmm. it doesn't make a difference. None of, he doesn't have any of these problems. Why? Because the water on his hands is not tameh anymore. If you pour with a lot of water. Then shamayim tameim kalal, because we have no tameh water there. So, in the Masa, when we wash our hands today, we don't have these problems. Because the water on our hands are no longer tameh. Look on page 288. This is the fascinating halakha. You may never have experienced this, but for those who did, you'll never forget that you experienced this. <laughs> in Chaf Hei, you see Chaf Hei? Not on the bottom, in the top of the page. Yeah, Chaf Hei, yeah. In bowl. In bowl, and I gave you a dab, and I gave it. If you came after you wash your hands, you came to dry your hands in a towel. I gave it, it's a towel. <laughs> And when you touch the towel, you discovered that it's very, very wet, this towel. You know that experience? <laughs> yes. Because many people online before you wash their hands. It's a very similar case to the water that's on the wall. It's just water on a towel. Somebody else's tummy water is on the towel. Oh, wow. 
Well, if they all wash to the river eat, then it's not on them. Very good, bro. That's exactly what we're going to say now. Very good. Oh. If you know that the people who dry their hands with a towel after Nitilat Yadayim, Yodim Litol Kedat Vechadim. They know how to wash their hands properly, according to Halacha. Vishofchim Shte Shavichot Shalmayim Ane Yadayim, and they pour two pourings of water on their hand. Or shofchim revit bevat achat Shte Yadayim, or they pour one revit on both of their hands. Or revit al kol yad. Or they pour revit on each hand. Meaning, they all know how to wash their hands properly. They use enough water. You do not have to go back and wash your hands again. The water in the towel are pure water. But if those people who came before you, they use that towel. They did it after they washed their hands. They only poured once and only less than a revit. I mean, they didn't do it right. You must go back and wash your hands again. Because the water that is on that towel, they are tamay water. In my house, either I wash first, or my wife always brings me an extra towel. But that's for sure there are going to be people in your life that stand before you in line that don't know how to wash. So it would be safe maybe to use like a disposable paper towel? Yeah. Time? Or what happens if you wash your hands with a revit of water and you don't dry them? What happens? You wait till the air dry. You eat. Yeah, well, so according to Maran, you don't even have to wait till the air dry. You can eat bread with wet hands as long as you wash with more than a revit of water. But if you want to dry, you wait till the air dry. Listen, if especially you're in Beda Knesset. So here we don't have a problem with a towel. But normally when you wash your hands in someone's house, it's a good 10 minutes till they make a mosi. Yeah. Your hands are going to be dry by the time they go there. Mm-hmm. If you're worried about the towel, just skip it. Forget mm-hmm. on a halachic level. On a cleanliness level, please. Mm-hmm. The question that he's dealing with in the footnotes is what happens if the majority of the people know how to wash their hands? But it could be that one or two people didn't. Mm-hmm. How do you calculate that? Does it go by majority of the people, minority of the people? Um, so at the end of the day, he says that because it's a rabbinic halakha, you can be lenient, as mm-hmm. long as you don't know for sure that someone didn't wash their hands properly. Mm-hmm. So I would say if you're in a situation where you touch the towel and you don't know, you don't have to be so scared because the Masa it's a rabbinic law. And even if you were to go back, you wouldn't wash again with a bracha. Mm-hmm. Because that's a biblical tub. <laughs> On the top of page 289. <laughs> when you pour the first waters on your hands, you must be careful. That you do not leave on your hand any kind of like band-aid or you know wood pick or anything that you would have on your hands. The water can only purify that water is on the hand. You can't purify the water on top of the band-aid, on top of the but if you're pouring the of water, you don't have to be careful about this. Do you remember the way it works when you wash twice? You wash once, and that makes your hand pure. Mm-hmm. Why do you wash a second time? Because now that you made it pure, now you're washing the hand. You want to get the impure water off your hand. Oh. Mm-hmm. But the impure water, the, the second water can only purify the leftover water on your skin, not the leftover water on something else. But if you wash with more than a revit of water, this whole halakha is not relevant to you, and most people today wash with a revit of water. Would that also be the case, like, if you have a ring? Yeah, I wonder if he talks about a ring here. One second. Well, that's a good question. I, I believe we spoke about a ring somewhere yeah. else. Yeah, we did. Uh... Do you remember? Oh, it was yeah, but I can imagine a ring is the same thing. Yeah. 
it, it won't purify the water on the ring. But if you're washing with the ravines of water, you don't have to worry about the ring at all. Oh, because a lot of people remove their rings. That's right. You want to say what about snow on your hands, ice on your hands? All right, page two ninety one. If somebody has a, a wound in his hand, does that mean anything to you over there, that word? Sounds oh, yeah, it sounds, sounds very. Uh, it is Spanish, but it's old Spanish. Yeah. Jacinto? Well, some, Jacinto? some, people, some people. What does that mean? I have no idea what no it is. Yeah. He says it's like a, a scab. Oh, like okay. when the blood gets hard and, uh -huh. and that. Oh, okay. Dai lo shitol You can wash everywhere except for there. V'tzich mm. nizaher shlo igam You have to make sure not to touch that part. Shlo yichzeru amayim shalar tiyah v'temoyad. You don't want the water from the wound to come back and touch your hand and make it come back. Oy shpo chavit al yad kechat. You should pour a bit of water at once on your hand. Because then the water does not become tamay. Remember, anytime you pour with enough water, you don't have to worry about any of these problems. So pour with enough water. Rama adds, You can pour the first waters into a bowl or onto the floor. It doesn't make a difference. I don't know what he wants to add here. Let me see, maybe uh, I can tell you what he's trying to get at. Well, he's trying to say, unlike my Machonim, which you shouldn't pour onto the ground. That's what he's trying to say. Uh, but we'll talk about my Machonim a little bit later in uh, Siman Kuf Pe Aleph, chapter 181. So right now mm. we're in chapter 162. When we get to 181, mm. we're going to talk about my Machonim. Yeah. Okay, these next two chapters in Shukhan Rubai, we finished all of Kim Samach Bet, Baruch Hashem, Mazato. That's Hashem. 162, now we're up to 163. These next two chapters in Maran are very interesting. They're interesting halakhot. Like uh, some of them are even unusual. And at the end of the next halakha, maybe tomorrow, I'm going to want to bring in a fascinating tshuva from the Yosef Masas about hosting guests who are not going to make blessings before they eat food. Mm. And you're going to give somebody food that they're not going to wash their hands for. Or you're going to give them food that they're not going to make a bracha on. Are you enabling them to do an avila or not? Does that mean you're going to starve all your guests? What does it mean? Interesting, uh, uh, yeah. we're going to look at it uh, yeah. now. This is going to be our, our next, uh, but tomorrow, I'll, I'll, if we get to tomorrow, if not, on uh, next Monday, I'll bring in that letter from Obi Osama's house.